I find in my experience that too many people make mistakes about which social security strategy to claim because they are not fully informed before they make the decision as to what is best for their household. And they could leave thousands of dollars on the table. So in this video, I want to share with you six things you need to consider before you make that irrevocable decision with regards to Social Security. But before we get there, subscribe to my channel. I have over 30 years in this business and I really want to share with you my experience, my wisdom, my conversations with my clients so you can make the best decisions for you and your household. Now, I have said this on this channel over and over again, and I truly believe it. I think our industry has done a lousy job of educating you in so many different areas as you head into that transition into retirement. How do you properly prepare for this next chapter of life when you have so many irrevocable decisions? Once you go forward on it, you can't go back. So here's a question for you. How many social security strategies are there and it's interesting i get numbers that typically range from six to ten to twelve different strategies but the reality is there's 567 different strategies so i understand where there's confusion but our industry needs to do a better job of helping you understand how you can maximize your social security income and that's what I want to do right here. Now, before I get to that, I do want to share with you a study that's been very popular on this channel. It was authored by United Income back in 2019, which indicated that 96% of people take Social Security at the wrong time. And their big takeaway was that those who are in their 70s and 80s, if they had made the right choice, could potentially have increased their income by 25% each year later in life. That's a big number, so let's get this right. So let's go through the six items, and the first one is check your work record. It's not that difficult to do. You can go on to your, to your My Statement account. By the way, make sure that you're registered. And you can check each and every year that's on there. Now. Going back to, I believe it was 2012, the Social Security Administration has indicated that they have approximately $1.2 trillion of income that they cannot match up to the proper worker. So if they can't match the income up, and let's say it's your record, then you're going to show up as a zero for that year. So it's going to be very important for you to go in because your Social Security benefit is based on your top 35 years. And if you have zeros populating any of those years, it's going to lower your benefit. So here I provide to you the instruction sheet for you to go in and check your work record. It's an easy thing to do. Do it as you are approaching your social security claiming strategy a year before, two years before, something like that. So you can make sure that you're getting the biggest benefit you can and the right benefit based on the amount of income you actually earn. So the second thing you really need to consider before you make your decision, and this is particularly for those who have a partner, they're married, okay? It's health. Because what we're trying to do here is maximize the household income. And that may mean that one is going to outlive the other. And the question is, will that happen sooner or later? So let me give you a couple of tips. This is not giving you financial advice here, okay? It's just something to consider that you can go back to your financial advisor who hopefully is very well versed on this topic so you can find out what the best strategy is for you. Now, if the health situation is on the higher earner in the household, that higher earner may want to delay taking 
his or her benefit until the latest possible time here, let's call it age 70. For if that individual passes away in their 70s, then their surviving spouse typically will be able to take the survivorship benefit on the, a high level of earnings, a high level of their social security benefit. For if that person who has the health situation took it, let's say, at full retirement age, then the surviving spouse's benefit is based on the full retirement age benefit. But if they wait to age 70, which will be higher, it's the higher number at age 70. Now, if the health, health situation is on the lower earner, you may want to take it early. Because what is the point of waiting, right? So if the higher earner has a health situation, you may want to delay it. If the lower earner has a health situation, you may want to take it sooner than later. What you want to do is run the numbers, go on the calculators, and figure this out for yourself. Now, I'm going to give you a big one that you may not have understood before, so please stay tuned. It's going to be number six. Of course it is, right? So let's get on to number three. What if you're still working? before full retirement age. So let me take you to my screen for just a moment. So let's assume you are still working before your full retirement age. You need to understand the earnings limits. If you apply for Social Security before your full retirement age and you work, $1 in benefits will be withheld for every $2 you earn over $19,560. Now the interesting thing is if you do it in the year of your full retirement age, there's a different earnings limit, and that is $51,960. But let me share with you a story. So I had a client of mine who a number of years ago, she was working part-time and she wanted to take her grandkids down to Disney. She said she needed about $8,000. So she said, I want to work a few extra hours, generate the extra income, and take the grandkids down. So myself and her accountant, we took a look at the numbers and as it turns out, she had hit what we call the perfect storm. And what I meant by that was she had hit the thresholds where the bottom line was between regular taxes and Social Security taking back income because it was going to be prorated. Of the $8,000 that she was going to earn, she was going to be taxed on 78% of it. She was only going to keep about 22%. So we went back to her and said, that th this may not be the right way to raise the $8,000. So this could be a very big surprise to you if you're not fully informed before you make the decision. Now, in my recent book, don't Outlive Your Money in Retirement, I devoted the second chapter exclusively to Social Security. What you can do is you go up to my banner, hit free chapter, I'll get it to you. You'll have many of the frequently asked questions, a worksheet that'll help you give you a little bit more clarity in terms of which Social Security strategy is best for you. So the fourth item that is crucial to making sure that you can maximize your household income is what we'll call spousal coordination. So let me take you to my screen for just a moment. Coordinating spousal benefits is crucial to maximizing your income. The rules are as follows. The primary worker must have filed for benefits. The spouse must be at least 62 for reduced benefit or full retirement age for full benefit. And unlike survivor benefits, there are no delayed credit, credits here on spousal benefits after full retirement age. Let's take a quick look at the numbers. The spousal benefit equals one half of the primary worker's PIA if started at full retirement age. In, num in other words, John's PIA, or what he would get at full retirement age, let's say is $2,000. Jane's is $800. If Jane applies at full retirement age, her benefit will be 1,000, which is 50% of John's, which is more than her $800.
Now, let me share with you a couple of very quick strategies here. And again, I'm not providing financial advice for you here. I just want to make sure you're informed and empowered. We call this the maximization strategy, where the lower earning spouse's PIA is more than 50% of the higher earning spouse's. Then one suggestion is that both delay to age 70. Then this may maximize your lifetime benefits over average or long life expectancies, but you really have to take into coordination your other assets as well here. The next is what we call the hybrid strategy, where the lower earning spouse's PIA, or amount that he or she would get at full retirement age, is less than 50% of the higher earning spouse. In this situation, the lower earning spouse would claim early and the higher earning spouse would claim at age 70. Here again is where we have to take into consider the health circumstances and survivor benefits, which I talked about earlier. One of the big differences here, as I just mentioned, was you can delay your credit your, and get delayed credits as a survivor, but not as a spousal benefit. So make sure you understand this completely and run the numbers, okay? The fifth thing you really need to do before you make this decision, check the math. So we have seven different calculators. You can go on the Social Security Administration site. You can check their calculators. One hint though, on the Social Security Administration, those calculators do not take into account the potential for cost of living increases. So just be aware of that. The other thing with regards to calculators, and this is really important, the calculator is not the end all to be all. You have to take into account your other assets, how old you are, what your required minimum distributions might be, part-time work, taxes, uh, any other income that might be coming in and coordinated with your social security. And again, this is where the planning will help you to understand which of these many strategies are best for you. And now I want to get to one that you may not be aware of, but I think it's really big. We'll call it, don't rely on social security advice. As you can see here on my screen, I've shared with you what social security personnel can and cannot do. They can estimate individual benefits and they can tell you the amount you are entitled to now, but they cannot project future benefits through scenario planning or help with innovative strategies designed to maximize benefits. It is in these conversations for advanced strategies and advanced planning where you really might find a nuance that is in your benefit. That is where a well-informed financial advisor can help you. Don't rely on Social Security personnel to provide that type of information for you.